Able to On Air major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont. State your name and spell it, please. Tom McCardle, M-C-A-R-D-L-E. Okay. And what do you do for the City of Montreal? I'm the Director of Public Works. And what exactly? Does I'm that... also the ADA coordinator oh, for the city. Oh, okay. To the mayor. Uh, what exactly does that entail? Oh my goodness, exactly. <laughs> so the Director of Public Works um, is a number of tasks, but oversees the, the overall department. Mm -hmm. On the ADA side of things, which is why we're here today, is um, uh, the Americans with Disabilities Act and Title II of the, of the Act, and that applies to municipalities and all the public facilities. So this is, what you've asked to look at is the, the public right-of-way aspect of the ADA. Uh, we've just completed a, an assessment, in fact, just sent it to you, the schedule and the list for all the municipal uh, buildings and, um, and outdoor areas, such as Hubbard Park. So with us today is Ann Watson, the mayor of Montpelier. Hello. <laughs> Hello. 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 Um, my name is Ann Watson. I'm the mayor of Montpelier. Do you need to do anything more? <laughs> no? Okay, great. Awesome. Well, I'm excited I mean, to... We're not, this is not the Tonight Show. Yeah. <laughs> this is important. Well, I'm excited to go on this walk with you and see what uh, see what, what do you think, the observations uh, are. Uh, as far as infrastructure is concerned in the city of Montpellier, what do you think... Um, I know we can't fix everything in one day, um, you know, by the snap of our fingers here, but... Uh, how, how can we work together to fix this infrastructure? Well, I mean, I think the first step was to uh, get this pretty comprehensive report. The plan, uh, it's an ADA transition plan, and um, it's a pretty great list of uh, things that the city needs to be doing to make our, our town more accessible uh, and uh, compliant with ADA standards. And so from there, we're going to need to uh, prioritize what should be done first and that uh, I mean we're going to be looking to the ADA committee uh, for a lot of input on that and uh, input into the budget for the next years to um, because because as you say we can't fix everything uh, immediately but as we um, you know, to try to decide what things have to have to happen first uh, or the, the um, it's hard it's, it is hard to prioritize that sort of thing because you know accessibility means different things to, to different uh, folks with different needs, and so that that can, that can be absolutely tough. But we're going to see what we can do to um, just start working away at it. One, one last question before we go on our walk. Um, as far as money is concerned, because I know everything has to do with money and finances. Um, as far as the ADA Title II, is there a specific budget that's mandated, or is it is it go by quarter, go by? Um, <laughs> You know, by the amount. Was it on before? <laughs> Three, two, one. Okay. So the uh, for financing um, under the public right of way side of things. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, that's overall assessment um, needs to be added to the plan. It's not currently included in the plan. Mm -hmm. The way we've been approaching it, and um, over the last several years, is a substantial alteration is defined by a revision, re reconstruction, repaving of a street. Um, and under that program, both federal, state, and local, we fund um, improvements to our crosswalk ramps um, as required under the ADA for an alteration. So that those monies are embedded in the projects for paving mm -hmm. and sidewalks. Um, so special projects where they're targeted to address a compliance issue. You mean emergency we did, projects? No, projects? not an emergency, uh, just a, a targeted need uh, where a ramp doesn't exist or is non-compliant. Uh, we'll target money specifically for that in our capital improvement pro project. Mm. An example of that is around Vermont College. Uh, we have a couple more ramps to complete up there, but we did several of them under a specific 
targeted project under the CIP program. They're not identified as ADA compliance projects, but they are projects that, that are um, we included as part of a sidewalk project, for example. We're going to rebuild a sidewalk, we'll build it in compliance with the ADA. Um, so it doesn't really matter one way or the other how we do it. So one way or the other, those projects are funded. Um, the Main Street where we're standing here today um, was funded by the Federal Highway, primarily. Um, the city had some money in the uh, roadway mm -hmm. um, and sidewalks. Um, and under that project, the ramps were all rebuilt and all of them were assessed. You see the new tactile warning devices. There's still a number of um, punch list items left to be completed. Some of the ramps exceed the half inch maximum. So that's that's the funding side of the public right of way. The crosswalks, the, the speaking um, crosswalk signs, is that part of Montpelier's ADA compliance? Or, crosswalk or, what? Signs or ramps? Signs. You no, know, when you push the button, it says uh, don't walk or stop. Some parts of Montpelier have. Right, that's not, on, that's not under the ADA. Mm -hmm. But if you provide them, then they have to be accessible. And they have um, locatable tones for um, those that are not apparent, uh, or somebody who's caning would have trouble finding them. That's Maine and State, mm -hmm. where you have a locator tone. The, the fact that you have crosswalks, signs, or signalization is not under the ADA. But when you provide them, then they have to be compliant. Mm -hmm. Expediency, but I probably shouldn't park in there. What's that? Does everybody know that? Does everybody know what? That I'm the mayor? Probably not. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no. Uh, so I'm wondering if I should move my car. You could, you could ask. I could just well, move, move it across the street right here. Okay. okay well, I'm gonna, this is no parking, but right behind that car down there with the brake lights on, yeah, okay. that is a parking spot. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm In fact, gonna you've do got that. room for two. Okay, well, I'm going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. Diplomatic immunity? <laughs> Diplomatic immunity. <laughs> Very nice to meet you, sir. You, 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 make, you make light of things. But, you know, it's in, like... I was in a movie. Oh, Diplomatic immunity? Yeah, this Which guy mean? was a uh, crook drug dealer, bad, just bad person. And he had, he was a diplomat. Mm. And what he was doing was laundering money, from drugs. And um, mm. and they thing. couldn't arrest him because, and that that's actually true. There's a movie, um, it had, <clears throat> uh, uh, some, I forget who was in it, but it was, it was called Barbershop. About mm -hmm. these, uh, it's a comedy about these guys, the, this guy that owns a barbershop and it passed down from family, you know, his family and his barbershop gets robbed and through this comedy um you know somebody tries to steal an atm machine anthony anderson mm. if you know if you know he's a comedian mm -hmm. so like, no I, that's not mine you know he kept on saying mm -hmm. that's not mine that's not mine um and the atm machine and, and the cops questioned him like What's your ATM machine? What's this ATM machine doing in, in your living room? You know, and, and he. Well, that's not mine. <laughs> it's not mine. No, he no open kidding. It. He no, couldn't open it. No kidding, it's not yours. You shouldn't have it. He tried to open it with a bat. Tried right. to open it with a pipe. But you know, uh, you know, speaking of which, we, you know, we all are here working as a team, and you know, stuff gets. Not all. Not everybody remembers that. Well, it's in New York, where we came, or where you came from, before we had where, um, you know, came to, to Montpelier. Um, some of the ADA compliance there, they're, they're accessible vans and, and so on and so forth. Right. Uh, takes so long picking up people Hi, and then... Good, how are you? Hi, doing well. How you doing? And then... You know, um, they say, oh, we're going to fix this, we're going to fix this, and it doesn't get fixed. We're talking about New York situation. Oh, yeah. I, I took my mother to uh, down Connecticut, went through New York State, and, and um, I, was, I was disgusted with 
lack of accessible bathrooms and mm. Which accessible part of parking New York State? spaces. Um, the parking rides? The just, well, we were on our way to Connecticut, so we were heading over to, what is that, 84. Okay, so that's what you see here. That real way. Quick. It's actually, actually a good way to go down. Yeah. Some of these here, the further you go up, I These guess. technically are all in compliance with the ADA. Mm. It's a half inch or more vertical rise. Mm. If it's more, it has to be rounded. Yeah. Um, yep. The gap, I can't remember what the gap is, but I think that's in the half inch or three quarter inch range. Mm. So technically all of this is. Now, the other part of um, sidewalk design is cross running slope. Cross slope can't be more than 2%. Okay. And a running slope can't be more than, I believe, 8. So uh, cross slope is that like side to side mm -hmm. and running slope is forward to backward? Correct. Okay. So then... if you've ever tried to be in a, a tried out a wheelchair. Yeah. And as I've tried it, it's pretty, it's, it's a pain. Yeah. But when you're in a, a severe cross slope, <laughs> your tires trying to, you have to put all the, uh, um, all the drive in the lower tire yeah, to lower. try to go straight. Right. And you have this sensation of trying to tip over. Got you, right. right. And because you're otherwise... As you go up by right edge, you'll see some of that. You might, you might want to, um, it would tend to, tend to turn. That's right. Yeah. The steeper the cross slope, the more difficult it yeah. is. And then it becomes un, not navigable. Got Driveways you. are some of the worst mm -hmm. uh, places and most difficult to design for a proper cross slope. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So here's a new ramp, um, turn around. Uh, this thing. And they messed up the, the, the ramp place and they had to patch it. Oh, yeah. It's not a great patch. It should be flush, really. Sure. But no more than half an inch. Yeah. And I think they messed it up. Should these, should these be more raised or lowered or what? These are these are for the visually impaired. Yeah. So it has to be color contrast. Mm -hmm. the raised bumps are something you can do a tactile board. So it tells somebody who's visually impaired that they're about to enter a travel area. So these are these are compliant. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the nice thing about this is that there's a green strip that makes uh, constructing the running strip. But, but the you do have to drop this grade as well. So why you often, very often see the sidewalk is reconstructed on either side of the ramp because mm -hmm. we have to drop this to oh, meet that slope. But the problem... So you got to meet the, meet the grade. Yeah. One of the problems that you run in, especially with this, like, uh, when it gets um, overly wet, during wet weather, ice or something like that, this gets slippery. It's true. They can, yes. So there's got to be some kind of warning. You know, that was in project development. It's got to be better 10 years. Hmm. I'm trying to come up with a, with a suitable tactile warning oh, interesting. system. But but yeah. there are these little bumps in between are, are your skid resistance. Mm -hmm. And then these get worn off a little bit. See the little bumps on top of the bumps? Mm -hmm. That's for skid resistance. <laughs> mm. hmm. Interesting. And that's really the only state approved tactile warning. <laughs> Some, most of them failed miserably. Oh no. The only one that, that's now approved is the cast one? iron. Huh. Yeah. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah, oh I my know. gosh. <laughs> Think about that. Part yeah. <laughs> if they fail, they like, oh, you're welcome. We <laughs> yeah. were this test site, and now, now we got to rip them all out. Do you want us to be notifying you, or do sure. you? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, I mean, and this is not, uh, this is not, you know, this is a no judgment question. Like, what, what would be the process from there? Like, we let you know, and then is it usually taken care of within like, the summer or? Depends on the severity of the hazard. We'll develop a work order. Mm -hmm. um, that will that's a, a fairly simple patch. Yeah. Basically they block it's not off a long the shoot lasting the patch. They block, the, they block the shoot the whole entire day or, or? no, um, to patch that uh, we can usually maintain pedestrian traffic on that. That's that's not a very long. We've got to clean it out. We'll fill it with uh, with the concrete. Okay. This is this is that would be considered a uh, uh, non-compliant. And when they're non-compliant for, for the ADA, they're also very often a trip and fall hazard for anybody. Sure. Is, that, is that because of the... Um, People who drag it, their feet, that's why. 
this is all because of the weather situation? A lot of this is, uh, it's a very brutal climate and we have uh, very poor soils in Montpelier. It's a glacial till, silty soils, so they're not well drained and we get a lot of frost action in our soils and then the very harsh climate. Mm. Sidewalks are plowed, so it allows the frost to penetrate deeper. And then, as <coughs> we all know, um, when water freezes, it expands. And they don't always settle back once they thaw out. So f for something like this, uh, would the solution be that you just end up grinding down the, the we have a We have a neat edge. grinder that does that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool. Sweet. I mean, should that be a hazard? I wouldn't consider that a hazard. I would yeah. that, that's a lower color. Uh, this one. This one up here? Yeah. yeah. Somebody in the wheelchair, my brother, who was working on that. This is bad. This, is, this has gotten to a point where it needs to be replaced. And replaced, I mean, it's, it's as opposed to patching it. So I would cut this mm -hmm. This whole this square. Panel out yeah. And, and, and is that because there's this crack in the middle of it as well? Yeah, there's no salvaging here. And you're hitting right into the parking lot of the church? Yeah, so these, this, are, uh, these are access issues. They have a second driveway. So this so th this crew would be OK if we blocked? Yeah, we have, have a second access. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, OK. Yeah, that is getting to be a pretty good gap there. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We do have a, a sidewalk contract that's released, so. Hey. Gotcha. But I was also looking at down in front of the uh, the inn and Gary home. Mm -hmm. um, I should have pointed that out where the sidewalk is lower than the curb. Sidewalks are meant to drain to the street. Okay, yeah. They're designed with a quarter inch per foot or about 2%. Mm -hmm. Through that and to the street. So Down there it's a sunken sidewalk. Oh, so it's lower than yeah, the no curve. There's no water to go. And, and then so the it's water's going to go into the sidewalk. And then the it sidewalk. freezes. Yeah, and... that's no good. So do all of, I'm just maybe, uh, I'm not sure if I'm noticing this exactly now, but at least it seems true for this little patch here. But uh, are the sidewalks all sort of tipped towards the road yes. for drainage? That makes sense. I don't know if that's a great design because that's where we store our snow and then that freezes. Yeah. And then there's yeah. no place for the water to go. So um, we try to work with our sidewalk <coughs> plow operator and a, to, every once in a while, <coughs> cut a little hole. Okay. Just push out into that, mm -hmm. and it'll let the water drain. Once the water is flowing, it'll make its own path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, as we go up here. So we have to keep reminding them and do as that once in a while. As we go up here, further we go up, some of it slopes this far here. It, like, um, as, you go, as you go towards um, city center, do you understand that Main Street's the flattest street we have in Montpelier? It is. It's okay. a flatter, flatter to pancake. <laughs> so flat that it's tough to drain. Mm. Oh. It's very unique for Montpelier because everything else is Everything else is so sloped. <laughs> and you're talking about a slope. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of funny. But yes, there is a very gradual rise up to, all the way up to Ferry Street, the Main Street Bridge. Mm -hmm. I would say maybe, maybe two feet the whole way. Hmm. Interesting. So this is getting to be. This is close. Tough. Yeah, and I think if I were to have done this over again, I would put a control joint here, not a construction joint. Oh, what is the? Can you? What is that? Well, a control joint. Is it's a design for the concrete shrinks cracks over time yeah well as it as it cures oh okay yep, yep and what you're trying to do is is control where that cracking occurs okay so you put in a joint okay and there's probably a little crack in here if that was cut deep enough uh-huh as opposed to a, a, a construction joint which is actually a form joint so the concrete isn't actually connected oh, okay so like here this panel is in fact connected to that it's panel connected to that, but there's yeah. this groove that's right and yeah. there's <clears throat> There may or may not be a, a crack in there. Got you. Okay. Because um, that's what you're forcing the crack to occur. But here, this, like this panel's not actually. Right. This and because of that, there's some differential settling. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. They don't. They don't rise and. Yeah, they're not together. together. Right. Yeah. 
and and so probably. Well, I probably take this out with a grinder too. You mean to like shave and, it? And down. it has been done. Here. Yeah, I was gonna it say like... it looks. It definitely looks like it's been ground down. And it looks like it's getting close to. Yeah. Need, need that, well, like it looks like it's been ground down here as well. But it's it's close. And myself being you're... visually impaired, because I am, you know. Uh -huh. um, sometimes, especially at night, one of the things that we could work on is possibly, maybe, <clears throat> if it's in the budget, uh, ADA budget, to have reflectors of sorts on the, on the sidewalk, or because I know some of the roads when you're driving you have reflectors, but what about those that on the sidewalk? Yeah. So reflectivity is is um, relies on a headlight. Ah. So there's not gonna it's gonna be dark unless you shine a light on it because it's a prism that reflects some the light extra back. Extra light maybe. Yeah. So sidewalk level lighting. So down yeah. in this area we have just the area lights for both the streets and sidewalks. Mm -hmm. We get downtown, we have both pedestrian and the, and the 30 foot lamps. Hmm. Yeah, so the pedestrian lamps are like the ones on that Montpelier sign? Yep, yep, that, there's that, like, one in there. Yep. Yep. Who's mayor at the time? I don't know, mayor's the first. We had a, a disability awareness day at a farmer's market oh, wow. and brought the wheelchairs down and different uh, goggles we brought them down from uh, Sheila with the Vermont Association for the Blind oh, yeah, sure. and it simulated different eye conditions uh -huh. um, and I tried out the ones that are, that are fully blind oh really because I wanted to find our new pedestrian button <laughs> yeah how was that but I could hear it. It really do focus. Really? In your hearing. Yeah. Oh, interesting. But I had to get close. Mm. Interesting. Huh. I had to be close. Okay. I had to know kind of where to listen. Interesting. Some of the street down here, have you notice. Here's some severe, more severe cross slope. I was noticing this the other day. Yeah. 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 You, we can tell that there. It's definitely sloping towards the road. <laughs> you got it. Yeah. That's probably in the five percent. Oh, really? Four to five percent. Huh. Probably so, so more than it probably should be. Yeah, it's probably twice what it should be. Yeah. Interesting. So I'm not wrong, but it just looks like it needs to be fixed. Yeah, you're right. Well, I wonder, gosh, I mean, for something like that, this, this seems tough because otherwise it doesn't, I mean, maybe that one up there, it otherwise doesn't look like a, it's a trip hazard. Mm -hmm. No, um, here's some grinding we did. I think we did have some trip and falls here. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a recent grinding. Uh huh. It don't look too bad. It does a pretty good yeah, job. Yeah, it's just it's just. Uh, the cross so, slope is too much. Mm -hmm. Um. Seems like that would be a bigger job to fix if it's like like this part right here. It's mm -hmm. uh, pretty. Yeah, and usually in you got to pull the curb. Oh yeah. So the, it, yeah, that it does makes get sense. expensive. Mm -hmm. Now when it it's all granite. The nice thing about it is you can granite curb you can reuse. Sure. So you remove, well, reset. So you could actually take out this section of granite yep. curb. And then, and then, would you just redo? You would redo these panels and then put the curb back. No, you put the curb back first. Yeah, okay. Okay. Gotcha. About two feet out into the road. Reset your curb to grade. Yeah. Patch your your curb in, and then you set your grade for the sidewalk. And you, I'd replace all this all the way up to uh, uh, about where that shadow is from the tree. Now, when it comes to like some of the business in downtown. Um, and there is like one particular business that's not accessible, uh, which is the pizza shop. Um, What's the pizza shop? The um, Positive Pie is? No, no, not Positive Pie, the other one. Bluestone. Bluestone. Oh, yeah. It's not accessible. The bathrooms are not accessible whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Is there a way that we could talk uh, through the ADA committee, talk to the business owner um, about making it more accessible or... Like There's no ramp whatsoever. Well, the way we do it currently is is um, through the, the building permit process, um, but there are architectural exemptions for historic building. So it's, the, a, it's a historic building? Yeah, so those there are architectural hardships that are hard, difficult to overcome. Um, what about a... So the, we're, the, the property owner really um, needs to be committed, and there are some grants available through... Um, 
uh, the housing community development um, says. Um, oh, because it the, housed the diner first. Is that why it's... It, it's um... Well, I'll give you an example. Um, Three Penny yep. uh, worked with us in the committee on... Um, and, and they're actually recognized by the Vermont Center for Independent Living mm -hmm. for making the modifications. But that was a larger renovation project. They were rebuilding that mm -hmm. from a bookstore or whatever it was to a restaurant. So they had the whole place gutted. Oh, to, so. to simply retrofit, modify a place that isn't all their, all, um, already undergoing renovations, mm -hmm. it, it becomes much more difficult and challenging. Mm -hmm. um, so that's something you, we work with our building department mm -hmm. um, to encourage property owners to do that. And we've got to remember that these are customers that they're missing out on. They can't get into their building. So it's, it's really so incentivizes. It's, well, if you figure the whole world or majority of the nation has a challenge. Of some kind. Of some kind. Yeah, I forget the numbers, but I, I think it's somewhere in the order of the 15 to 20 percent population have a, have a mobility disability. Hmm. Um, then there are those that are silent as well. Yeah, there's there are other Definition, disabilities. There's many, many that qualify under the ADA. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but the mobility um, challenge is, is the one that that's a real that's a true barrier, mm -hmm. a stare. So it's such a critical point. What's wrong with the this point? This point right here? Nothing wrong with the basin. It's the pipe. There's a huge telephone line. Oh, really? Really? The pipe, the pipe is shallow and it's small. Okay. So, so it, it just... You scratch mark. We're always cutting ice. To so it just doesn't, because it... A telephone... It freezes. It freezes a telephone and, wire and, in there? Oh, there's major... See those two manholes? Yep. There are huge telephone pipes. There's another manhole over there. There's three over there. Yeah, well, one like this was, has always been the telephone hub. What do you mean? Oh, because because that building. Yeah. Right. And if you look up in the sky, you don't see any wires. It's really nice about my place. It's pretty nice. Power, power. A ramp. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember when they were doing that, I told them, it's nice you're trying, but it's, it's way too steep. Mm -hmm. So you told them that. Yeah, 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 so unless they're under... Um, and State Street also. Under a state down. permit requirement, they're not obligated to do it. So it's really, a lot of it is just encouraging mm -hmm. to do it. It's showing them that it's... Um, very often you can remove some, some they call readily removable barriers. Mm. Miles, just moving your products back. Equipment back also. Yeah, make it wide enough. Get into those architectural issues. That has a floor slab that's um, this is a, would have had to remove. This is also a problem. That that is right there. Yep, and some some cracking here that needs to be worked on. Mm -hmm. um, well, the time, yeah, you said it, 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 that place has architectural damage. That's what you were saying. Right, right. So, but that's a floor slab. Define floor. Define floor slab when it comes to stuff like this. So your your ramp or your floor, the main floor of the restaurant, mm -hmm. is at a higher grade than the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. um, so to to modify. Something has to give. Either you raise the sidewalk or lower the floor, or you do both. Hmm. And when you're dealing with a floor grade, you're now into the structural members. There hmm. very often isn't enough, any play in a floor to drop it. What we have done in a couple of locations, and we did out over here with uh, Three Penny, is they made an architectural change internally. We allowed the sidewalk to also be lifted. So we kind of met in the middle. Um, in some cases, that can be done. That's a good solution. 
but not in all cases because we can't then put the city sidewalk out of compliance by raising it too much. Sure. We worked with the state on a grant over on Elm Street in court. Mm. Um, oh, that restaurant just changed hands again. I think it was Korean, but over by uh, Uncommon Market. If you look at that next time you're over there, you'll see how the city sidewalk oh, was hippie raised. Chick it's hippie chickpea. It's yeah. chickpea now. Yeah, right. Yeah. We brought the sidewalk up, and it's right on the borderline of being compliant. Huh, huh. But we provide worked with them and provided an accessible entrance to the store. Huh. Sorry. Sorry to, to go yeah, off. I got, on a, got a complaint about this this winter, uh, so I related to the property owner. So did I, I, I called them on several occasions, mm -hmm. and I had mentioned to you I had called, yeah. but, and, and. I think it's three feet wide, barely. Yeah, so they're, they're actually not three feet wide, so. Because as you go it's with a, the wheelchair, it's like, it's Minimal too narrow feet. and it bumps into it, yeah. Mm. And that's probably not a wide enough turnaround area, so this was built really before the, the Architectural Barriers Act. They, uh, they probably weren't under those standards. I think this was in the 80s. Yeah. This would be a major project to rebuild. But is this too. private? This is private. This is all private property. Can but it's a public there? building, so they're under Title III. So, so because it's, they allow public access, Okay. Or provide public access. Yeah. They have their restaurants, their offices. <laughs> They're under obligation to to meet the standard during a renovation. Oh, okay, so if they were to ever renovate, they would have to bring it up. To they, standard. Okay. Yeah. And is that and any part of it or just this part? Of it? it would have to be I, this aspect of it. Okay. So. Um, I saw him. I saw them paint the get that, but this was a fix. New paint job. That's, that, that's not a substantial alteration under the uh, ADA. Painting is not substantial. Yeah. Yeah. Well, gosh, because I mean, it, it seems like because yeah, I mean, the concrete's kind of coming apart here. So if they were ever going to say like, well, we're going to re repair the concrete, that would turn into you might a you major might trigger job. it um, that way, but it's yeah. Or or you know, I, I was thinking this was at least three feet wide, and they just had some um, some issues like our cider in the building. They have another ramp out back, but they've closed that off. That entrance. That entrance. Wow. So I think somebody might press the point, you have an accessible entrance. But why did they close um, it? Is there a reason? I don't know the reason of that. Hmm. But that would be an alternative, an interim solution. Hmm. Under the ADA, you were, were required to provide equal access. Mm -hmm. So it's it's... But it's frowned upon to have somebody. Yeah. It's not really equal. Right. But as an interim measure, that would be suitable. Mm -hmm. City Hall is an architectural um, barrier, and, and there's an exemption. So people would understand why you use the back entrance. And it's very often the back entrance is the front I've entrance the for a meeting. Sure, yes. Yeah. So it's it not really problem. that unequal because yeah. everybody else is using that door. Yeah, it's true. But this building, it would be. That, to me, that would be a good interim solution, particularly in the winter months where this is, that's when I got the complaint, it was icy, not maintained. They shoveled the walkway, but they didn't clean this out, so. And some of the doors, there are, work, like the timer is off, and it closes early, and it's like, is there a way to fix that? As, as well, that's well? not an equal access issue, if everybody's, prevented from going in the building and they have a lockout, that's mm -hmm. that's fine. Um, it's how that door operates. No more than five pounds pressure and you can't twist and grab. So, and if you can't meet that standard, then you can do the automatic, you can push the button. Was, Don't was know the button if working? they have those. Hmm? Was the button working? It, it works and it doesn't work. Remember okay. we went through it that day and it, yeah. some, it closed. It does have a button? Yeah. Okay. Sure it, it, it closes, uh -huh. and it, it, it closes too early. Some of them are on, like the one, the one in uh, Rite Aid, some of, you know, that one works, but it, they're on a timer, and if the timer is off... Oh, So right. you're saying that when it, while it opens, it doesn't stay open long enough? No. 
it, it, okay. it, and it, it slams. Oh, up. there's a there's a time, yeah. So yeah. it, it uh-huh. can't Slam, it can't bump you and knock you over. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they have to close gradually and interesting. slowly. Interesting. That seems. Yeah. That, that would be an interesting. That's a maintenance. That's an adjustment yeah. issue. Yeah. Yeah. Should be able to just adjust. Right. Mm-hmm. Adjust that. Alright, so we're, did you say we're headed to our subway? Yeah, we're okay. on State Street. So, like, some of this, um, see? Some of this is like, is that bad? Or yeah, what is it? Uh, Splitting a pump? Something we keep an eye on, and it's not a, not a priority with some of the other things. Hmm? What if it got worse? Yeah, this one's getting a little bit. It's getting a gap right there. That one I would fix. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Trying to get something in the background for my landmark. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, no, that makes sense. So it's not just a straight down. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. Yes. <laughs> See, like, this is a lot of Sorry, sorry, not getting here. Like some of this um, along here, where it splits, or somewhat yeah. splits. We've got some work to do on the bridge. Which bridge is this? Up here. From an ADA perspective, we replaced this. Oh, yeah. This yeah, was I all mean, done with the paving project. So I was going to say, this definitely all that looks was fine new. Just a few years ago. Yep, yep. And and yeah, this was. You yeah, see, this was patched also. Isn't that funny? It, was the, it looks like it was actually lower. What's that? We're not crossing the check, you know? Uh. Yeah. So. This, this is. Engineers. They paved it. I presume it was a little bit too low, or it may have been a puddle. So they maybe they grind, they ground it and then add it there to try you to. You ground it off. It. Yeah. Make a roughened surface. So that it would here. Uh huh. <coughs> so you might grind off too. Yeah. Put back one. Okay, got you. Uh-huh. Oh, it's already on the list. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. This is a tricky one you can't replace the walk. What do you mean? Because it is the bridge. Oh, this. This, this is considered the, this, the bridge? This is the bridge Well, because it is a bridge. Oh, yeah. Right? Because we're over the river right now. Yeah. Oh, interesting. So, so all we can do is patch it. So, like, because, like, it looks, I'm guessing, like, from this panel right here, because there's this crack here, that this would otherwise be one that you'd be like, oh, let's replace this panel. Right. But you can't right now. No. There's a steel plate underneath this. Wow. Yeah. So, I mean, someday we'll be replacing this bridge. Replacing the bridge or fixing the replacing. bridge? Replacing. It's a replacement. Replacing. Yeah. Okay. And replacing the bridge? So when that happens, that will probably include this. Everything. Is there anything to prevent the cracks in the sidewalk each to it? Or, because then you got to do all the work over again. All the work that you do cleaning stuff up, right? And then you have a water main break, then you gotta do everything over again that was a problem. Huh? I'm not really following. The excavation to repair it. Mm-hmm. So it's it all has to be restored. So if it whatever, had been, I'm sorry. Whatever was impacted by the water main through our own actions or by the cause, by the failure, mm-hmm. um, it's all replaced in kind new. So, for example, Elm Street, we just patched the sidewalk with asphalt for the winter. That will be replaced with concrete and granite shortly. Hmm. Anything else you want to say when we wrap this up? Um, no, just uh, thanks for thanks for doing this tour. Anything you want to wrap up? Say no, more. no. I think uh, I think it's important that we uh, let folks know that we're aware of this. Um, ADA awareness is, is important, and um, that every community has um, has this this uh, challenge to try to stay up with it um, and meet meet the their obligations under the ADA for equal access. Been a lot of communities. Sure.
It might be a little yeah. steep, but it's workable. I would think the bigger issue is the width of that door. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the way it pulls out. Yeah. Those should go in so that really? there can... Really? I have thought that the exterior door... Well, see, that's a fire issue, yeah, too. It's a fire issue, right? right. That is supposed to On air, major sponsorship was given by Green Mountain Support Services, empowering neighbors with disabilities to be home in the community. Also, sponsorship was given by Washington County Mental Health Services, where hope and support come together, and Champlain Community Services of Vermont.